Help support AMTV by becoming a patron, an AMTV staff member, and following us over on Twitter. Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here. And welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be taking a look at some more television channel logos. And now, I know what you're going to say. You'll say, Adam, what did you say at the end of the last video there? Before you ask, no, don't make me do Channel 4, because you want to know what the journey of the Channel 4 logo is? It's this. It's basically this. And yes, I know I said that. However, after doing some digging, I do think there is some stuff that we can talk about. But to get bang for your buck, we're going to be taking a look at two television channel logos today, that being Channel 4 and Channel 5. So without wasting any more time, let's get right into it. So Channel 4, this is the very first logo that was seen. This was launched in 1982 alongside the channel. And what can you say about this that hasn't been said already? It's iconic. It's wonderful. It's sleek. It's stylish. It's colourful. Where to begin with what I like about this? First of all, I think the idea of the interlinking blocks was not only a groundbreaking idea back in the early 80s when computer-generated technology for iDents was very much in its infancy, but I think it shows off the strengths and varieties of the channel because you've got to keep in mind the whole remit of Channel 4 being created or one of its remits was that it was to show programming that the other broadcasters, namely the BBC and ITV, wouldn't, and it still very much carries that remit today in some shape or form. I think that not only links in with the different blocks, but I think that also links in with the colours. The different colours, you could argue, represents the variety of programming that Channel 4 has to offer, the diversity of the programming it has to offer. And then the design itself, the sleek, you know, the, the look of it, that is just a very strong look, very memorable, and of course, one that we not only remember from back in the day, but one that is still very much used, spoiler, but is very much used to this very day, over 40 years on. And this ident was used for the best part of nearly 15 years, used all the way up until 1996 in this colourful form. Now, yes, you'd see versions that were, say, all in black or all in white, depending on the trailer or advert, etc., or what you'd see in print media, but this colourful version of the Channel 4 logo would be in use for almost 15 years before being swapped out. And as you can probably tell from some of the ident examples I'm showing on screen, this was one of the most versatile logos of the time, if not ever, for a television channel. Some television channel logos can be a bit clunky, not very adaptable into certain scenarios, but the Channel 4 logo absolutely was a shining example of that. So what would we get, you know, after an ident's been used for that long? That's some pretty big, pretty big shoes to fill. So what would they follow it with in 1996? They would follow it with this. This is sometimes known as connections, so as you can see, we've got the Channel 4 logo, the original one, now all in black or sometimes all in white, again, depending on what you'd see on screen, now encased within a circle. And the idents that would go along with this would see four circles, obviously tying in with the channel's name, the channel's identity, so on and so forth. This one, I, I honestly see it as a bit of a downgrade. Looking at it on its own, you know, to remove the color from such a vibrant, a different channel, certainly for back then, is such a shame. It feels more now like it falls in line with some of what the BBC and ITV were doing back in the mid to late 90s. And the idents that go with it, again, they don't necessarily inspire much, particularly when compared with what came before throughout the 80s and 90s. I think on its own, though, when you look at it, you could say it's quite striking seeing that four logo within a circle. But again, I think most of the positives come from the original four logo, not the enhancements. You know, there's a reason why they kept it the same. Just a little side note, they tried in the early 90s to revamp the four logo quite famously. And I mean, these are just test examples. But I mean, when you see this, this doesn't... <laughs> This doesn't exactly inspire much, does it? So this is the design that carried Channel 4 almost till the end of the 1990s. But before the 90s bowed out and the new millennium came in, they decided to change their brand identity once again. So in 1999, we were given this. This just feels like the connections, but now just slightly adapted for a different shape. You can see the four logo there is now in white and it is placed within a square. It seems squares were very much the thing at the end of the 90s going into the 2000s. The BBC has somewhat of an exception because the idea of squares or, you know, slanted squares, rectangles, whatever you want to term them as, that was sort of baked into their identity from the late 60s. But they straightened them up in the late 90s and we got that logo that has been used for nearly 25 years now, still is on some BBC products. ITV would also go for a blockier format well into the 2000s, but as we discussed, I don't think that's very good. This one, I mean... Again, striking, it stands out, but I think that mainly stems from the four logo itself, that design that originated all the way back in 1982. The addition of the square, I mean, yes, it's nice to compartmentalize it, I guess, within a shape, just like the circle one, 
But what does it really tell you about the channel? What what is it? What inclination does it give you about Channel 4's variety, its wealth of content? It doesn't really tell you that much. The idents in practice, again, they are different colored backgrounds mainly, and they they weren't bad. But again, like the connections one, this just feels like Channel 4 going a bit more a bit more plain, a bit more like the competition rather than diverging from the competition. I don't know whether it was to cut costs or anything like that, but it just feels very, very plain. You know, that very late 90s, early 2000s minimalist, but to the to the worst extent. So we'd have five years of Channel 4 within a square before in 2004 we got a logo that many people of my generation and generations to come would recognize it for. And that is this. This was in use from 2004 all the way up until 2015, so for well over a decade. And as you can see, it's still the same 4 logo at its core, but the technique here is a very interesting one. It's all in white and was typically placed on a white background. The way you'd see it would be on these shadowy edges on the back there. And I think when you see that stood on its own, it does create quite a very mesmerizing 3D shape. It's quite nice to look at, I think, even with it being white on white. My problem was in practice, this was often too quickly shown on like the little stings between programs that you couldn't really take it in. And of course, the idents, we've talked about the idents from 2004 a lot and they are great many of them are great but they don't really utilize this logo it's more about using the it's more about using the items around them to create the channel 4 look but this being like the brand logo that channel 4 used themselves for over a decade again it's better than the late 90s efforts i'll give you that the the shading technique here the shadowing makes this stand out a lot more in my opinion than just having the logo within a shape it's something interesting it's something different it's a better example of a 3d look than say itv were doing at the time when they tried to make the ITV1 logo a bit more 3D looking. I, I personally don't think that worked, whereas I think this stands out a lot more. So I can see how this lasted for quite a long time. But as always, a change is a gonna come. So in 2015, Channel 4 rebranded its main logo once again into... Uh... Uh, I'm not quite sure what... <laughs> I'm not quite sure what the idea was here. At its core, it's still very much that original logo that debuted in 1982, except... Uh, there's a bit more spacing between the blocks, and the blocks themselves, I could be wrong on this, but they look a bit thinner. They definitely look a lot sharper. But yeah, the, the gaps between, I, I think this more undermines the logo than strengthens it. This was at a time, though, when you, you wouldn't see this logo as much on television screens as previous ones. But just looking at it as a static image, the gaps to me, I think they just, they undermine the the breadth of what Channel 4 is trying to offer, it, it to me at least communicates that they aren't fully connected. There's all these different strands that are hovering around together, but they're not they're not quite connecting. They're not quite joining as one unifying force. And I know, yes, this is just a logo, but honestly, the, the gaps here, considering what it's representing, you know, gaps in blocks like this could work for different companies. But I think for a company like Channel 4, as I say, I just think it severely undermines it. And this was used for a surprisingly long time as well, all the way up until 2023 in some corners. But in 2022, another uh, rebrand occurred, and it is this. So this, to me, just looks very much like the original 4 logo, except now, well, this static image, at least, is all in black. We did get some variation when this one was introduced. That's been seen on a lot of the different idents, you know, all lit up in green. It's used as, like, app icons and things like that. But do you see what I mean when making this video about Channel 4? The main thing I come back to is the strength of it is on the logo itself. Yes, we've seen some variations. We've talked about the different variations here. But when you look at all of them, the logo is exactly the same. There's no insane difference between what was introduced in 1982 to what was then rebranded in 2022. Yes, the colors might have changed. Yes, it's been in different shapes. It's had 3D effects, all that sort of stuff. But at its core, the Channel 4 logo has remained pretty much the same, which for a television channel, I think is quite rare. There's very few television channels in the world that have retained the original logo from their inception. Very, very few. So for Channel 4 to do that, I think as a brand identity, it's really strong because you show anyone this logo in the UK, you know, out of context, any adult, I should say, and they're going to know what that means. They know that that is the Channel 4 logo. They know what that represents. They know what memories that hold for them. But yeah, for variations, all of it is down to the strength of the original design, which was done by Martin Lambinen, of course, who sadly passed away in 2020. And when he did pass, Channel 4, uh, quite rightfully, respectfully, aired that original logo from 1982 to commemorate it.
So props to Lambie Nairn and his team for back in the 80s creating one of the most iconic television channel logos of all time here in the UK, and some would say maybe in certain regions across the world too. But as I said, that's not the only channel we're looking at today. Let's take a look at Channel 5. So when it launched, this is what it launched with in 1997. And again, there's not necessarily that much to it. It's just the numeral five encased within a circle. So in a way, th this and Channel 4 would have looked very similar at the time. But whereas Channel 4, the actual number itself isn't just, you know, typed off a base font, it was custom made and that's what helped it stand out. From what I can see, the font used for Channel 5 here is is very much a base font, almost like a kind of Helvetica or something like that. It's very common, and you could say that that is a, is a decent approach. It makes it accessible, like Helvetica, if that is the font, is a very straightforward font to read. It's very easy to read. But I don't know, something about this just doesn't... It doesn't necessarily grab you, it doesn't entice you like some of the other logos at the time did. This was used for five years until 2002 when they had a rebrand and they changed to this. So this was a thing at the time, television channels dropping numerals from their name and going with the written out version, essentially. I mean, the BBC did this in the late 90s, ITV, they hadn't done it quite yet. They stuck with their numerals. They'd last for quite a long time, actually. But Channel 5, it seems, wanted to follow suit. Now, again, I think the font in this is a kind of Helvetica. It's a very easily accessible font. It's a very striking font, for sure. And interestingly, this was designed by the same group, Spin, who also designed Channel 4's logo from 1999, the one where it was within a square. And again, when you look at this, I, d I just think, yeah, it, it does tell you what it is. It's five, but... I do think for Channel 5, I don't know what it is, I've always preferred it being a numeral as opposed to written out. There's just something about this that doesn't feel very, it doesn't feel very official. And I don't mean that in any disrespect, but I think that the downside of using such an accessible font type is that it could look like it was designed by anybody. And I know when they designed it, they probably wanted, you know, easy reading, things people could easily identify it with. But like I said, you look at the Channel 4 logo, you instantly know what that is. If you look at this, you know, this could mean a number of things relating to the number 5, not necessarily a, a television channel. I do think it's better than the 97 one, but only slightly. Fast forward six years to 2008, and another rebrand was on the cards, and Channel 5 gave us this. Now, this is slightly better. We're seeing a bit more color. The five is now encased in an orange circle, which, you know, we don't see enough orange in TV. Let, forget about Nickelodeon. They've always had orange, but I think we could see a bit more orange in TV. They're still spelling out the number five, you know, F-I-V-E. But now the font is a bit different. You can see on the F there, the top left is a bit more rounded, yet the V is slightly slanted, a bit more striking. It's a very... It's a very odd choice, I think, font-wise. I think either go with all of it having rounded edges, this sort of mi uh, mishmash approach, whilst I, maybe it was to better fit the circle motif, but there's just something about this that doesn't quite resonate with me. I'm all for the addition of the colour. I like the fact it's now encased in this whole circle design, but the font for me isn't really given. They haven't really perfected their font game yet. This was used for just three years, so <laughs> seems that not much faith was placed there. And then in 2011, we were given this. So now we are finally back to the numeral, and now this. That is a strong logo, if I do say so myself. I believe the font, again, is a form of Helvetica, so again, a very easily accessible font. But isn't this really bold and really striking? The fact it's in a red circle, I mean, red is a very eye-catching color. It works with a lot of things you put it on, whether that be eye dents, stings, trailers, print media. It works with a lot of things inherently. So seeing it here, like, bam, that is the Channel 5 logo is really strong. No other bells and whistles, no weird design choices. It's just a strong, bold numeral five within a red circle. It works, and I can see people identifying it with Channel 5, given the time. Some of you may not like it, but that's fine. That's your opinion. But I think this is their best logo yet. Again, simplicity can work, but whereas compared to the original one, you know, there's no, there's not really any color here. It all feels a bit thin, a bit a bit, you know, that sort of not too confident we're a new channel, we might fall apart any moment. Whereas this, had they debuted with this back in 1997, this screams confidence. We know who we are, we know what we're doing, and we're here to show you and make you remember us. Really strong. Amazingly, this only lasted for a period of five years. It could have gone on for another five, if you ask me. So in 2016, we were given what we have today, which is this. What is this? 
They made a big thing at the time of rebranding and having this new logo and stuff, but I don't know, man. They almost do go for a Channel 4 style thing by having interlinking blocks, although instead of being rigid, these are more fluid, a bit more bendy, a bit more flexible. You will notice that there are five blocks because, you know, Channel 5. And yes, it is a very unique looking logo, but I, I just can't help but think that they were they were borrowing something from Channel 4's stable, no? I mean, the whole interlinking blocks thing. Their idents don't really live up to much. I've never really liked the Channel 5 idents from this era. But, I don't know, you went from something so simple and so strong to this, and it just doesn't feel, I don't know, for me at least, it doesn't feel cohesive. It doesn't feel unified. Unique to Channel 5, yes. And uh, undeniably, I mean, it's been in use now for eight years at the time of recording. There probably will be a lot of people who will see this logo and think, yeah, that is that is Channel 5. But to me, this is such a downgrade from what came before. I just think not only is it a bit derivative of Channel 4's logo in principle, you know, one that had been in use for decades by that point, but it's just, it feels like there's no rhyme or reason to it. Why make this and then don't have the, you know, the idents to sort of match the concept? A lot of Channel 5's idents today are very bland, very boring. They don't really inspire much. So that is where Channel 5 is at today. And its logo progression, again, it has its variety. It's gone from a numeral to being spelled out and back to a numeral. As I said, for me personally, I much prefer it being the number 5 as opposed to being spelled out. Some people might prefer the opposite, which is absolutely fine. But yeah, they've had quite the varied history. But for me, this 2011 logo, that's the best Channel 5 logo, man. If you top that, I'll concede. But as far as I'm concerned, this one hasn't been topped just yet. But yes, that is all the main logos for Channel 4 and Channel 5. What did you think about them? Let me know down in the comments below. Did you have a particular favorite? Did you have one that maybe wasn't to your liking as much as another? Let me know all those thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like on it. It really does help us out. And subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you aboard here with us. In the meantime, I've been Adam Martin from AMTV. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Thank you to our patrons for helping to support the show, and a special thank you to Macra, Bruce Danton, Globe of Reviews, Derek Chambers, Sean Nock, Dord Khan, Trev Hughes, AJ Mac 200017, Deck KP20, Simon Harrison, Evan Hart 41, Jen, Ted Elliott, Tim Ripley, Mr. Eurovision 1986, and Robert Oliphant, our AMTV staff members.